and we're back we're live we're in the classroom again uh, at least for a little while i don't know how long i'll be in the classroom this week guys um there has been uh, uh, an increase in the covid num numbers in thurston county and so uh, i'm trying not to get sick so i don't know that i'll be coming in here a lot but i wanted to get in here i've got my document camera set up i've got my calculators ready to go uh, and i'm going to do a little tutorial for you guys on how to use your ti-89 and the normal distribution so if you have a ti-84 or an inspire this is the wrong video click on one of the other links uh, i've made videos for all three calculators uh, what i wanted to show you first was uh, how we can use the calculator to do just some basic normal uh, calculations for those probabilities um, we don't have to go to table a we can use the calculator uh, and so i wanted to show you how to do that uh, then i want to do the assessing normality uh, where we go through using the uh, normal probability plot. So I want to show you how to do that. Uh, I have a data set. I'll tell you where it is when we get to it. Uh, that way you can pause the video if you want to enter the data into your calculator and see how your graphs match up with mine. All right, let's jump over to that calculator. And here we are. We've got my TI-89 ready to roll. And I'm going to go to the usual spot, right? We use the stats list editor all the time for this class. So that's where I'm going to head. Now, uh, I have a data set in here. That's for my next example. Uh, so don't worry about that right now. What we're going to look at here is if you look across the top, look at that F5 menu. Okay, I know we've talked about the various uh, menus of commands up here, but up here we have F5. Okay, and that's our distributions menu. I'm going to go there right now. And um, we have lots of different uh, choices in here, lots of distributions. We're going to use a lot of them this year. So uh, we'll be using this menu quite a bit. The one I want you to look at is, is uh, choice number four, something called normal CDF. Okay, we always use normal CDF. That's the cumulative density function, okay, where we have uh, adding up of all the area underneath the curve. And that's where we're going to go. And um, your calculator here, guys, so the, the nice thing about the TI-89 is it understands infinity, so uh, or negative infinity. So the first one we're going to do is I'm going to go back to my uh, heights of U.S. women, okay, which I know are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 64 inches and a standard deviation of two inches. And I might be interested in, well, what if if I have a woman who is 60 inches tall, okay, um, what is the uh, percentile rank for a woman who is 60 inches tall? So I want to go from negative infinity up to 60. Now, if I leave lower value blank on the TI-89 calculator, it will automatically fill in a negative infinity for me. So I'm going to hit enter here. And look, it says from negative infinity, there it is, to 60 with a mean of 64 and a standard deviation of 2. That puts you in about the third percentile, the you know 2.28% of women are shorter than 60 inches. So yeah, if you, if you have a woman who is 60 inches tall, five feet tall, um, she's taller than about 2.28% of all women in the US. Okay, that's how you use the normal CDF. The great thing is it can do, um, you can do the probabilities uh, greater than. So I could say, oh, what I wanna know is what proportion of US women are taller than say 66 inches leave the top one blank. And now it'll go from 66 up to positive infinity. And oh, taller than 66 inches. So taller than five, six is um, about 16% of, of US women. Okay. If you wanna do one of those in-betweens, you can do that as well. Right here, go from 60 to 66 inches and see that that is about 82% of women in the United States are between 60 and 66 inches tall. So that is the normal CDF computation. I went through that pretty quick. That's because this is a video. Pause it, rewind it, watch it again. You can do all that stuff uh, and it's uh, very simple. Uh, the last thing I wanna leave you with before I move on is notice that we didn't have to convert any of this to z-scores, okay? The calculator did that for you. It did all the computations for you and it spit the number back out. Um, table A requires us to find the z-scores, and I encourage you to continue to use that to find z-scores because um, z-scores are a big deal for us. Um, but just for quick uh, computations in the normal distribution, hey, this calculator does a great job with it. All right, last thing here with the TI-89 before we uh, 
shut this video down, is when we talked in class uh, on either Monday or Tuesday, depending on when I had you in class, we talked about how do we assess normality, okay? And the data set that I'm using is the unemployment data that you will find on page 125 in your book. So if you wanna follow along, Go ahead and pause the video, go to page 125 and enter all the unemployment data from the US uh, and then come back to this spot in the video. Okay. What I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna do a histogram, okay? And I wanna do a histogram on list one because that's the only list I have now. And I'm gonna zoom my data and say, now does this data look approximately normally distributed? No, not really. Um, but I think uh, it could be normally distributed, but it looks a little skewed to me. Uh, so one of the options would be to go through that, you know, 68, 99, or 95, 99.7 uh, protocol. We could do that. Um, but remember, the other thing I said in there was, hey, what about um, the normal probability plot? Let's take a look at how to construct that on your TI-89 calculator. Uh, so remember, the normal probability plot marks the x-axis with the data values, but instead of frequency, it uses the z-scores on the y-axis. So let's, let's take a look and see how that works. So I'm going to go back to my plot setup, and notice right here, instead of where I normally would go, look at the second choice there, normal probability plot. We're going to go there. And you can see the normal probability plot is going to go into plot number two. You can choose which plot number. If I push into the right there, I'll leave it at plot number two. Uh, the list is actually a list one, so let's do that. The data axis is usually the x-axis, so please leave that alone on the, on the x-axis there. Okay. It will make the y-axis then um, the, uh, the z-scores. All right, so it's busy, it's doing its thing. Okay, so now, when I go back to my plots, go to F2, go into my plot setups, notice plot number one is still there, my histogram, look at plot number two, okay? That is going to be our normal probability plot. Now you notice there's little check marks next to the two plots. I don't wanna plot plot one anymore, so I'm just gonna push F4, it'll remove the check mark. So now I'm only going to be looking at the plot number two, and now I'll push F5, and boom, there's our normal probability plot. And we ask ourselves, does it look like it's a linear plot? And yeah, it looks pretty linear, but I'm going to say I've got some issues with it. Like if I try to fit a straight line along here, um, I've got a little bit of curvature there. And you know, this curvature right here is a problem for me because it certainly seems like it's curving. And then I've got some outlier possibilities here, especially this guy that's way out here. Um, normally distributed data does not typically have outliers in it. So uh, I guess my end conclusion here would be, I don't think this data is approximately normally distributed. I think it's got some issues. So I, I wouldn't feel comfortable modeling it with a normal distribution. So there we go, guys, thank you for uh, tuning in for the video on how to use the TI-89 and do some normal calculations. Um, if you have uh, other questions, uh, we'll be able to go over those in class either Thursday or Friday, depending on when I see you next. All right, so uh, thanks a lot guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.